In this second video, we're going to take a look at how you can edit your lesson plan. What I'm looking at is a view of a weekly planner. This is a planner that teaches the same thing every day. We will get to what it looks like if you have a rotating schedule in a later video. You will notice you have a sticky note at the top of each day. This is personal preference if you want to type anything in there. This is a great place to put a reminder. Maybe you need to remember to send home papers that day. Maybe you need to remember to hand out field trip forms, whatever it is. You can go ahead and you can put in any kind of note that you want right there. If you wish to switch your view, you can come over here and click it back today and just see the full day in one week or month. I've already gone ahead and applied the template to my class. So now all I need to do is go in and edit content. All I have to do to do so is click edit content. In here, you will see the lesson plan that I need to fill out. Up here, it will say untitled, but you can give it a title if you wish to. And then you have all of the information that you need to fill out in your lesson plan template. Across the top, you will notice all of the editing tools that you have. It is very simple to add into your template. You just click into the box and start to type. If you don't like the way that that looks, maybe you don't want that bolded, you can highlight and unbold. You can change the color or the size. You can make it a little bit bigger. You can change the font. You can change your text color. You have all of these options across the top up here. If you want to, you can actually go in and add links as well. So if I highlight that and I click on insert link, it will tell me the text that I'm going to highlight and then I can put the link in there for wherever I want that to go. Across the bottom, you will see some options. This is your save button. Make sure you do click save. It will not auto save for you. Along the bottom is where you see standards. The first time you click on this, you will not see any standards. You will have to go and locate the standards for that subject. To do so, click on browse standards. Up here at the top, you will select United States, Louisiana. You will choose the subject you are teaching and your grade level. Once you've done that, go ahead and select on the standards that you will be using. Once you've selected your standard set, you can go and you can click in to all of the standards that you want to use for that lesson. The nice thing about this is once you set that one time for this particular class, you don't have to set it again. If I go into my math plan and I click on standards, you will notice that the grade five math standards already pull up for me. I selected those earlier, so I don't have to continually do that every time I need to do standards. So right here, what we're gonna do is we will just click on the standards that we will be using for that lesson that day, and then we will click on save. Those standards will be down here, and if I hover over them, you will be able to see the standard expanded down there at the bottom. Also across the bottom, if you click on the paperclip, that will allow you to attach a document from the computer that you are on. If you click on the Google Drive icon, it will prompt you to log into your Google Drive and you will be able to attach anything stored in there. And the same for your OneDrive. This would be great to attach any PDFs, any handouts, any presentations that you may need to for this specific lesson. It will house all of your information and content right here on this plan. If we go back up to the top, you will see three options here. We have import, share, and options. Import allows you to choose a resource or a lesson plan that you have saved in your resources. You will not have any right now since this is the first year you're using this, but next year that will come in handy. You have the share option right here. You have print slash PDF. So you can create a PDF and either save this or, or print this. This comes in handy when you have a substitute or maybe you need to give this to a fellow coworker or an administrator. Resources is where you can share this to your resources to have for future years or to share with a coworker. 
So you can enter their name, um, a group if a group is created for you, or even just directly by their email. Down here, you're going to want to go ahead and add some tags. What this does is it makes it a lot easier to locate your resources later. To do this, all I did was type math unit one and hit enter. And so then that tag was created. And when I go into my resources, I can search by math unit and one and everything that is tagged that way will pull up easily for me. You can see that I have this in my resources, but if I did not, what it would look like is right here, I would click on add to resources. So it's just that simple to take it away or to put it back in. Group of lessons, once you start teaching, you can create a class and um, create your unit and you're starting your end date and you can add your lesson plans to this group. You can share via a public link or an embed code if you wish to put this on your website. Keep in mind, anything that is in this plan will be viewable with whomever you share this with. So if you copy a public link and share it with parents, anything that you have inside of your lesson plan, the parents will see. You cannot pick and choose what they can view. So be very careful when you decide what you wish to publish or what you don't. Same goes for Google Classroom. You could share this directly to your stream um, or ask a question, create an assignment, etc. But anything that is inside this lesson plan will be shared with them. So how you're going to do it, what your, less, uh, what your standards are, how many students mastered each objective, etc. So be very careful about that. Under the options button, all of those things that we just looked at are also stored here. So again, your print, your sharing to classroom, or your sharing outside with a link, importing, you can choose your template if you needed a different one. Lesson history lets you look at your lesson as though it were a Google Doc. And you can see all of the different iterations of that lesson plan. So if you needed to go back to the beginning, and reset it, you could. Notice you also have that option up here at the top to compare it with the current lesson plan so that you can see which changes you have made. So right here, my new change to what's happening right now is the learner will be able to. I did not have that in my original plan. If I did not want to keep that, what I could do is I could revert back to this by clicking on restore. The other two options are copy a lesson, if I click on copy a lesson, I can copy it to a specific class. I'm looking at teaching on August 11th. I'm currently working in this math class right here. Well, I teach the same lesson just to two different groups of students. So I don't want to have to go back through and retype everything from scratch since it's going to be the same information. All I have to do is click on that math class and then click copy to one class. It will give me the warning, are you sure you want to do this because we are going to write over anything that's in that box. Just make sure you're picking the right class and then click yes. Now I can check that because I did not have standards connected to my other plan. Notice right here it shows two standards attached. If I come down to this math plan down here, you can see that I now also have two standards attached. If I click on in here, I also had added the learner will be able to. I now see that into this plan as well. So that saved you a little bit of time from having to retype everything. Move lesson lets you take the lesson and replace another lesson with it. This is one that you may not use very often. The only time I could see where you might use something like this is if you were planning and you accidentally put it on the wrong day and you needed to move it to a different day. If you move a lesson, the one thing you have to keep in mind is if I say, okay, I want to move this science lesson, I cannot reverse this. So what's going to happen is it's going to take it from wherever I have it and put it where I want it to go, but anything that was in that box will be deleted. It's going to be overwritten. If I don't want to do that, let's say we had a weather day or you were sick and you were out and therefore the lesson that you wanted to be taught didn't get taught and you want to push everything a day. What you want to do is you want to shift your lessons. So what this will do is if I click on forward, it's going to take and it's going to move everything forward one day. So notice my lesson is not here anymore. It is here. 
Had I had other plans in these boxes, everything would have been shifted over one day and then whatever was on the Friday would have carried over to the following Monday. So in an event of a day out, this is your best option is to go ahead and just shift everything over so that you can have what you're currently teaching that day in that box. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how to edit the timetable. That will help us to edit our classes, rename them, change their times, or any other changes that might need to be made.